Hi everyone. Before I begin this video, I want to first start off by saying I think I'm gonna forego the introductions. I find them a little awkward at some points. Um, I rewatch them and I'm like, Ugh. so for now on, I think I'm just gonna start jumping into the review as soon as the video starts. So let's begin. I have been pretty unfamiliar with Raphael Anton Itasari's work up until this point. He specializes in very thick and well-textured ambient and drone soundscapes. Most of his work under his own name or under his The Site Below pseudonym have been focused more towards an ostinato motif with these rising songs that can encapsulate you, they're full of reverb, delay. It's interesting to note that he's also a multi-instrumentalist as well as a composer. He's been doing this style and this sound for well over a decade at this point, and this album, Peripatia, is his latest effort yet. I pretty much discovered this album on accident, just perusing album of the year, looking for new releases to talk about and to listen to. I stumbled across this based on the album cover, I thought it looked interesting, and I found out it was an ambient and drone record, so I checked it out hoping that I would enjoy it. Before talking about this album, I do want to talk about ambient and drone music in general, because I always have had somewhat of a reservation with that genre because I've always had a tough time, I guess, getting into it. I mean, you might be looking at me kind of crazy, like, you just put an ambient and drone album at the best album of your decade list, what are you talking about? However, I'm talking about more of a classical ambient and drone record, if that makes any sense. The ones that Mr. Edisari does are pretty slow building, they rise into something great, unlike Maybe Tim Hecker, who does a, a very wild and all-over-the-place kind of sound, which does work in his benefit for the most part. Raphael's music can mostly be regarded as just regular ambient and drone releases thus far. However, I feel like that on this record over here, he has conjured something that truly resonates with me. When I describe most of the songs on here, they might sound like similar descriptions, however, the sounds that are on these particular songs do vary. It's just the progression at which these songs move are extremely similar, and the textures and the tones of a lot of the tracks are very similar as well. But what I find so appealing about this record is that it maintains a very consistent, dreadful tone throughout the entire runtime. And through all of the eight songs on this record, I'm not including the continuous mix, they convey somewhat of a theme that's running through this entire record. What I'm feeling is at the beginning of the album, you have this sense of impending doom or dread, but there's still hope at the end. But once you get to the final moment of the album, almost all of the hope is gone. The opening moment of this album, which happens to be the least dreadful of any of the tracks on this album, coasts us in with these droning synth layers that are well textured, dense, and foggy and hazy, they're full of reverb, and in a strange way there are some underlying ambience on this track where the sounds kind of sound bright compared to the other very nocturnal and dark moments. Now I wouldn't classify this album as a noise record at all, however there are some moments of noise that happen on some tracks, and that starts to happen with the track Between Negative Voids, where the very linear formula of the first track comes into play on this track in particular but some more layers of ambience are added. The tone has definitely shifted to a more darker and nocturnal vibe. Mellified is also a darker moment, but it's not dark where it's completely pitch black. It's this off-white and off-color sound that is off-tune and very eerie. I would be very fearful if I heard this if I was walking through a forest at night. The track Refuge and Refuse, ah, oh, the song is incredible with the way it's composed, where the instrumentation is just almost building on top of one another. It gets bolder, it gets louder, it gets more intense. You think there is a peak, but after you get to that peak, there is another peak behind another peak. There is just so many climaxes in this particular track. Yearn is a track that features these underlying guitar melodies that are very 
simple, they're somber, and compared to this song in particular and the backing composition of the track, it's a perfect match. To me, it's like the realization that there is nothing you can do and all hope is lost. And the final two tracks is this person reconciling with the idea of being done for, being over with. The song Fright and Control leads us to this amazing crescendo towards the back end of the track, which then leads us into the next song, the final moment on this record, Vanishing Points, which is the longest song on here, and similar to the first track that coasts us into this record, I feel like this song coasts us out with some nice soundscapes, ethereal soundscapes, and beautifully textured ambience. The compositions on this record, while they're not the most innovative or most unique sounds I've ever heard, they really take that style of music and put it into a form that is easily digestible. I will say if anyone asked me what albums are a great starting point for the genre of ambient and drone, I will give them this album as a jumping off point. Because the record isn't too noisy, it isn't too harsh, it isn't too long as well. While I will say this album does have a very dreadful tone to it, it also has a very relaxing, soothing, and almost satisfactory feel to it. Honestly, the only moment that I am not head over heels for on this album is the track Arduous Clarity, which features these stuttering hi-hats. I don't know if they're hi-hats or not, but it's this tapping effect that sounds metallic in some way that distracts me from the underlying ambience of the track. It does kind of form into its own little thing towards the latter half of the song, and it does become a beautiful section of the album but it's this song in particular that really drags this album down. And I don't really listen to the continuous mix, it's just the album on its own, but other than those few minor criticisms, I am absolutely enamored with this record. The compositions are great, the textures are dense, the soundscapes are frigid yet ethereal and relaxing. This record is also somewhat calming to my ears. Uh, that might not be echoed with some people, but with me personally. I was just completely in love with this record, and I have not stopped listening to it up until this point. Personally, I'm giving this album an A. It is beautiful, it is well done, it is great. I absolutely enjoy this record. However, I am curious to know, what are your thoughts and opinions on this album down below? Let me know what albums you want me to review next, and that is it. Leave a like, comment, share, do whatever you want. Let me know how I can improve future videos down below. Remember, that's only my opinion, because music is subjective.